Welcome to Install From Heap, Episode 3, a Nutrunner podcast from Rattlebox Games about jank, deck building, and cyberpunk nonsense. I'm Brendan Riley. Have you ever walked into a grocery store, stared at the artfully sculpted stack of canned goods on display, and been tempted to pull a can right from the middle? You know it's a bad idea, but it's so shiny, so nice, you want it. That's what it's like to be a jank player. The first Wayland deck I built used the shiny, terrible identity, Titan Transnational. What's that? You don't recall that one? That's because it's terrible. It's a Wayland ID that gives you one recurring credit to use on Advancing Ice. I really wanted that deck to work. I tricked it out with Space Ice that I could advance to res cheaply. I spent influence on the Jinteki card Trick of Light that let you move advancement tokens around. That way I could leverage those Space Ice into agenda counters. I got that idea from the Run Last Click podcast. But it never worked, and I shelved the deck. That is, until Blood Money, the second pack in the Flashpoint cycle. That's when we got Builder of Nations, and I broke out my Wayland Advancement deck again. The Jank Returns! This week, I talk about those decks we just don't want to put away. Combo we know we can get to work if we just try hard enough, and whether glaciers can ever win in an era of global warming. Playing Wayland I'm by no means a master player. In case you hadn't seen the signs, you've arrived in Janktown. This week I thought I'd give a bit of insight into the Wayland Consortium. In the game, Wayland is the industrial heavy of the corporations. They built the Beanstalk, a giant space elevator that put New Angeles on the map. They built the Grindle Refinery, which apparently caused tsunamis or something. They have military response teams and lots of meat damage. They are the kind of corporation that puts projects ahead of people. In fact, they're named after the famously callous Wayland yutani Corporation from the Alien movie. What was your special order? You read it. I thought it was clear. What was it? Bring back life form. Priority one. All other priorities rescinded. As a damn company. What about our lives, you son of a bitch? I repeat, all the priorities are ascended. If the other corpse will reach in and mess with your head through your rig, Wayland will put boots on the ground and kick in your door. Fantasy Flight has been putting energy not into this economy or this meat damage, but into developing advancement tokens that go on ice and other non-agenda cards. It's this process of advancing non-agendas that I'm keen to make work. Here are the main ingredients in this so far unappetizing sauce. Builder of Nations. This new Wayland ID has a minimum of 40 cards and only 12 influence. It reads, The first time an encounter with a piece of ice with at least one advancement token ends, each turn, do one meat damage. That's the eroded version of the card because it's already been eroded to indicate that it fires regardless of whether the runner bypasses the ice or not, making it a much better ability than if it could be bypassed. This new timing condition when the encounter ends, overrides some of the usual ways runners dodge this sort of thing. Builder of Nations seems like it should work on two angles. First, it taxes the runner with recurring meat damage, making them slower to run and giving you time to score, hopefully. Second, it sets them up for the big whammo traps later by keeping them low in cards. Space Camp. This is a silly card. It's a free trap, meaning it reses for free, that provides one advancement token when the runner accesses it. I like it because, like Shock or News Team, it works in the archives, too. Once Space Camp is in the archives, the runner has to help you every time they check the trash. The Cleaners. If you get one of these scored, it makes the runner's life a whole lot more messy, as now that single meat damage becomes two every time. This makes for a really hesitant runner. With all of these elements in play, I'm still not doing very well with the deck. Part of the problem is that early game setup. When you play your initial ice, To apply the cool effect here, you need two clicks, one to install and one to advance. The ideal first turn would be ice, ice, shipment from Kaguya, but this leaves you credit poor, meaning you might not be able to res those ice when they're first encountered. Right now, my deck feels a bit like a movie licensed video game. It's shiny, and it seems like it should be good, but it's just kinda blah. I'd love to hear your feedback and advice. How do you use Builder of Nations? What are you doing with the advancement tokens? I used to have the Trick of Light in this deck. Should I put it back? As usual, you can see the deck, Glacial Advance, on Netrunner DB, where my username is Wombat929. I've also put a link directly to it from our show notes at rattleboxgames.com. 
Executive Boot Camp, Identities. As a way of accumulating my own personal advancement tokens, I'm taking time in each podcast to reflect on a different basic Netrunner lesson that I've learned in the last few months. In this episode, I'll explain a bit of thinking about identities. To experienced players, this may feel, well, obvious, but it was a very useful revelation to me. When setting up some core-only decks to teach a friend to play Netrunner, I ran across an article offering some deck lists and explaining that you should teach new players that their identity is a central goal to work for, kind of like a directive, to use Haas Bayroid terms. As you build your deck, you should be thinking about how to optimize the effect the identity gives you, and how to minimize the amount of the game during which you're not taking advantage of it. For example, when you play the classic runner, Gabriel Santiago, you should focus on his identity ability. The first time you make a successful run on HQ each turn, gain two credits. This ability provides direction and focus for the runner. Try to access HQ every turn. For new players, just keeping the goal shaped by your identity in mind can provide a structure in a game that can often be overwhelming with lots of choices. A new player sometimes needs to just concentrate on the goal at hand. When life gets you down, you know what you gotta do? I don't wanna know what you gotta do. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. What do we do? We swim, swim. Doreen Osini. Oh, 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 I love to swim in Doreen. When you want to swim, you want See, to See, I'm gonna get stuck now with that song now it's in my head. Sorry. For example, when I play Engineering the Future, the Haas Bioroid deck that gives you a credit after the first time you install a card each turn, I make an effort to install at least one card almost every turn, even if I don't need it. In doing so, I gain a credit as well as increasing the targets for the runner to attack, and thus hopefully be misled by. In a recent game, for example, I used a turn to install a second Melange Mining Corp, giving me two of these cards, face down, in remote servers. The clicks the runner used to expose those cards and the credits they spent trashing them narrowed the margin enough that I was able to score my last agenda and win. The first foundation stone of your deck is the identity. By working hard to make the most of the ability it provides, you can find focus in deck building and gameplay. Let me know what executive bootcamp lessons you've learned as you've grown into the game, or what ways you've seen to make your identity really work well. Flavor of the Week, The Cleaners And now, I continue my homage to the stimhack.com column running on italics by taking a moment to look at one card I talked about today in the context of its flavor and theme. This week, The Cleaners. The Cleaners is a Wayland 5-3 security agenda from the Second Thoughts data pack. It reads, whenever you do meat damage, do one additional meat damage. The flavor text reads, I use bioroids because I can wipe their memories or just blow their brains out when the job is done. No witnesses means no witnesses. The art on the card is pretty much on the nose. It shows a businessman with an umbrella and a flashlight standing in the rain while two bioroids dump a plastic-wrapped body in a shallow grave on the outskirts of New Angeles. For a corporation that operates its own security force, a black van with a crime scene cleaners is a must. It absolutely fits the notion that the businessman would use bioroids to do the heavy lifting and then erase the memory most permanently. That this is an agenda and not an asset works too. Some executive in the security division has an idea for a fleet of black vans, and if word of them were to get out, as a runner stealing the agenda, it would be harmful to the organization. Maybe this is what Bioroid runner Adam is so mad about. So for theme, the art and flavor text work. Let's look at the mechanics, though. Whenever you do meat damage, do one additional meat damage. Picture the cleaners more like a no-nonsense hard case who comes in when the job is done to take care of the mess. I'm Winston Wolf. I solve problems. Let's get down to brass tacks, gentlemen. If I was informed correctly, the clock is ticking. Is that right, Jimmy? Uh, 100%. All right, that gives us 40 minutes to get out of Dodge, which if you do what I say, when I say it, should be plenty. Now, you got a corpse in a car, minus a head in a garage. Take me to it. But in this scenario, gaining credits or removing bad publicity seems like more reasonable results of the cleaner's work. They hide the black ops, or they increase influence credits by keeping the crime hidden. What they wouldn't do is increase the damage done by the attack. I don't know why having a cleanup crew would make scorched earth building bombing more powerful. For art and flavor text, I'd give this card top marks, but for mechanisms, I'll have to downgrade it to B+. Well, that wraps up Install From Heave Episode 3. If you have suggestions for future topics or comments on the show, I'd love to hear them. You can send email to brendan at rattleboxgames.com or tweet to Rattlebox Games. You can also visit our website, rattleboxgames.com, to subscribe to our newsletter, 
or follow the link to our forums on BoardGameGeek.com, where my username is Wombat929. I'd always enjoy losing a game of Netrunner to you on Genteki.net, where my username is also Wombat929. See you next time, but until then, remember, when all your best cards end up in the trash, you can always install from Heap. The clips used in this episode are from Alien, Finding Nemo, and Pulp Fiction. The ideal first turn would be Ice Ice Shipment from Cayuga. The ideal first turn would be Ice Ice Shipment from Kaguya. The ideal first turn would be Ice Ice Shipment from Kaguya, but this leaves you credit poor. Brought to you by Rattlebox Games.